verse of scripture today in verse 18 of Genesis chapter 26. And Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them, speaking the, the them is the wells, he called the wells by the names which his father had called them. Notice what he said. It said that he dug again, that Isaac dug again. I love that. He dug in the days of Abraham, his father, Isaac dug again the wells of water. And I want to talk to you for a few moments today on dig it. Turn to somebody and say, dig it. I gave you a spoon when you came in today. How many of you have got your spoon? Hold it up. Let me see your spoons all over the room at every campus. How many of you got your spoon? Well, I'm asking God today to turn your spoon into a shovel and transform it so that you can redig some wells that God wants to open up in your home and in your family. The wells that were supposed to refresh and, re and revive with living water, the Bible said the Philistines, the enemy of God's people, stopped them up, clogged them up, filled them up with dirt. It actually says that. Once some translations say earth, but that's dirt. And therefore, there was no way for a new generation, Isaac and his generation, they couldn't get to the water that the father, Abraham, and his generation had dug. And it lets you know that a well is a pit or a hole sunk into the earth to provide water. In other words, you can't get to the water unless you get down into the hole. And if you're in a hole today, in a low place, you're closer to the water than you've ever been. Wells in the Bible were important. They were hard to dig in ancient times. They didn't have drills. They didn't have the things that we have today with our modern technology. And so they were in a Middle Eastern terrain, desert, dry, hot, extremely hot. And it was a, it was a matter of life and death to find water. If you could find a well of water, you became very wealthy in Bible days. A well of water would be like an oil well to us today. And Abraham began to dig for water and he struck it. But he understood that the time and the energy and the expense that he put in digging for this well was not only for him and his wife and his generation, but Abraham understood that I'm digging a well for my son Isaac and his generation. My grandson, Jacob, in his generation. The Bible said in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 22, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Another way of saying that is a good church leaves an inheritance for their children's children. In other words, you're, you don't just need a good church, but your children need a good church. And your children's children and your children's children's children one day will need a good church. And we need to make sure that we have a perpetual spirit-filled church in every city where we have people that we want to reach. The thing that I love about the well that we're preaching about today is it had been flowing for about a hundred years and the well of water that I'm preaching about has been flowing for a long time. And there's a good chance that those of you who are here, your children will be in the drinking from this well. And your grandchildren will be drinking from this well. God's dream for this ministry is that it go from generation to generation. That it go from glory to glory. That it go from faith to faith. And every time we love truth and live it, we're securing a well for the next generation. Every time we worship and we fast and we pray, we are securing a well of pure living water 
for the next generation. What we're doing on these 21 days of fasting and prayer is securing a well of, of revival and refreshing and restoration that only God can bring to people's lives who are thirsty. And we've got to make sure that our children have the same drink of pure water that we had, that our parents kept the well for us. We've got to keep securing that well. Genesis 26 and 18 said, when Abraham died, this is key, the Philistines waited until Abraham died, and then they filled the wells with dirt. The water was still flowing, but they blocked it and barricaded it. And they said, now that the old man with the white hair and the long beard named Abraham, he, 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 he would fight for the whale. Some, some whales are worth fighting over, and we couldn't do it while he was alive. But now that he's dead, the new generation won't defend the whale, and we can just throw dirt in it, and we can serve mixed water. We can serve dirty water. We can serve, as a matter of fact, we can just dry the next generation out. And what I want you to understand is as soon as he died, they worked to cover up everything that he had accomplished. The old patriarch died. And I couldn't help but wonder in my mind, I wonder if the devil just sits on the sideline and he's waiting for some of the elders and some of the grandpas and grandmas and moms and dads and families to die out because they're committed and they got living water and they love the power and the, and, and the, and the water of the Holy Spirit, the river of the Holy Spirit. But the enemy knows that, that as soon as they die out, the well of that family, the family well will dry up because they can pour dirt in. They can dirty up the water. They can dirty up the worship. They can dirty up the doctrine. But I'm here to declare today that we are determined in this ministry that our children will drink from the same well that we drank from. That our grandchildren will drink from the same well that we drank from. They don't need some watered down power of the Holy Spirit. They don't need some dirty water that's mixed with the world. What they need is one drink of living water and they'll never thirst again. They'll never thirst again. I wonder how many of you under the sound of my voice at every campus are 60 years of age or older. Would you stand up and don't lie? If you're 60 years of age and older, stand up. Give them a big hand. My mother-in-law, Pat, you don't look over 60 years of age. She uses oil of delay. Amen. The oil of delay. But I want to make a vow to every one of you who just stood up. I vow to you, I promise to you that as long as I'm pastor of this church, we will never allow the dirt to get in and clog up the well of the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, I'm hungry for it. I want to drink a pure living water this morning. We don't need another church service. We need a drink of heaven's river this morning. Somebody give God a praise. Get your spoon out and start digging the well of water again. We need and we must have an Isaac generation that will get the shovel and let the enemy know that you're not going to take away everything the previous generation attained for us. I'm saying today that the devil would love when all these white heads die off for something to change in your family. He's doing everything he can to stop. The Bible said in Joshua, there arose another generation who knew not God or his mighty acts. We're in danger 
under the time that we're in. I know the power. My mom and my dad dug a well, and their parents dug wells. And for generations, three generations now, we've all been drinking, but the next generation, they are digging wells. And I'm not going to let that mess get in my house. In the name of Jesus, my grandchildren, four of them, and one day my great-grandchildren, they're going to have a well that I have dug through fasting and through prayer. And I keep getting the dirt out. Every time we fast, the Holy Spirit will bring the dirt up. And he'll say, dish it out. Shovel it out. Get it out. Now you're going to feel the water again. The wells of modesty have been clogged up. The wells of morality have been clogged up. The wells of holy matrimony have been stopped up. And people are living like they're married, but they're not married. They're doing things like married couples do, but they're not married. And we got to unclog that well. We got to turn our spoons into shovels and say, God, I'm going to fast and pray. I got to get this mess, this stuff that's of the world out of my house. The wells of sacrifice. The whale of servanthood, the whale of sanctification has been plugged up and it's time to redig those whales. The whale of revival, the whale of repentance, the whale of restoration has been covered up, but we don't have to settle for that. We can dig and redig the spirit of revival until we love the word again and we love praise and worship and we love God's house. And it's not something we do for one hour on Sunday, but he's in our car, he's in our house, he's in our family. We've got to redig that whale. Let's dig a little deeper. We got to redig the whale of powerful preaching and prophesying and praying. We've got to redig the well of deliverance from drugs and alcoholism and immorality and pornography and demonstrations of the power of the Holy Ghost and false doctrine has got to be thrown out like dirt and say, Lord, I'm not going to take that loose stuff. I want to be more like you. I want all that out of me and I want pure living water again. We can't give the next generation anything less than what we drink. The Bible said that he covered, they covered up the wells that Abraham named. And Isaac redug those wells and he didn't change their names. I'm saying to you today that when you understand what I'm preaching there's some things that we don't need to change the name to. The name that Wales represented somebody in a family who digs a whale and they would name it after that person. And somewhere in your family roots, there was a mother, there was a father, there was a grandparent, there was an aunt, there was an uncle. Somebody dug a whale and in heaven's memorial, their name is on that well. That's why you couldn't stay where you were in sin. That's why you're sitting in a church this morning. Somebody dug a well. You don't even know why you keep coming, but they dug a well. And it's not that the water's still not there for the family. It's just you let the Philistines put too much dirt in. But if you will just start reaching out for God, if you'll just get that spoon and you'll say, God, I'm going to do some digging this week. I know there's some water. And before you know it, slosh, you're going to hit the river that your granny had because it's still there. Healing is still there. Revival is still there. Family household salvation is still there. I don't care how messed up your children are. I don't care how far from God they are. There's a well in your house. Somebody dug it. And if you'll dig, you're going to hit the water. You're going to hit the water. 
The problem is we've gotten used to drinking muddy water. And we've got to long to drink from those old wells again. Redig the wells and don't rename them. You still got to repent from sin and forsake your sin. And I'm not going to rename it for this generation. You still have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, baptized in water, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I'm not going to rename that well. You still got to come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And I'm not going to rename that well. There's only two destinations that you can be headed to in eternity. It's either heaven or it's hell. And I'm not going to rename it to be politically correct in the church and preach a cool whip gospel. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. You're living right or you're living wrong. You're a hypocrite or you're a sold out Christian with a cross on your back. But there is no middle ground and I'm not going to rename the whale. He said, I wish you were hot or I wish you were cold. But if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. If you're living in sin, you're a sinner. And you're going to go to hell. And I'm not going to rename that whale. I'm not mad. I don't hate you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. You can't have joy with one foot in the world, getting drunk half the time, getting high half the time, and then running to God on Sunday. It doesn't work that way. I'm not going to rename the well. And the reason you're not satisfied is you're not drinking pure water. You're drinking dirty water. Man, I feel like preaching. I'm telling you, this is real. What i got a hold of is real. Real. What's in Acts chapter 2 is real. But you got to get the dirt out of your life. I want to give you a couple of whales, three of them, that we need to redig. And then I'm done. We got to redig the well of worship at Free Chapel. We cannot lose the well of worship. We got to keep the worship opened up. We can't let the devil throw the dirt of pride and intimidation of what people will say. The only reason some of you don't raise your hands is because you're full of yourself and pride and intimidation. And the reason we got so many teen sickles is because we got so many pop sickles. And if the teen sickles would see pop raising his hands and praising God, then guess what? It would move down the line in the family. You don't have the luxury of not coming to church and worship in the 21st century. Demons are coming after your family. You better get you a censor of worship and start saying, devil, get out of my house. Get out of my children. Get out of my marriage. I'll worship my way to the throne of God and to the victory that Calvary has won. You got to redig the well of worship. Genesis 22 and 5. I love it. Abraham said to his servant, Me and the child, the lad, are going to take the wood and we're going to take the knife and we go yonder to that mountain to worship. But you stay here with the donkey. I could preach something real good right there, but it would offend many of you. So you really have a choice every time you come to church, really every day, because worship shouldn't be something we just do publicly in church. The more, the more powerful private worship you have, the more powerful public worship you will have. And if you've been doing it all week long, it's nothing to you to walk in here and praise God. And I like what Abraham said. He said to the servant, we're going yonder to climb that mountain and worship. But he said, but he said, I want you to stay here with the donkeys. In other words, you got a choice. 
You can stay in the valley with the donkeys and the do-nothings. Or you can climb the mountain of worship and you can clap your hands, lift your hands, open your mouth. And I tell you what I felt in my soul getting this little sermon together was God wants us to unclog the well of worship again at Free Chapel. He wants you to worship till tears roll down your face. He wants us to worship until we get our shout back. He wants us to worship until we're unashamed and the dirt of pride gets thrown out and the dirt of intimidation gets it's thrown out and I'm like David I don't care what anybody thinks if you think I've been bad up to this point and if I embarrassed you and you brought your neighbor you hadn't seen nothing yet God didn't give me this microphone to become dry and dead in the last days this nation needs to see a church on fire and you can't have fire and water if you don't have worship get the pride out and worship out, dance, run, leap, clap, raise hands, but let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Give him a shout of praise. Come on, release the well of worship. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. I love you, Lord. And I'm not just digging for me, but I want my children to get in a red hot Holy Ghost service. I want my grandchildren to get in a red hot old fashioned Holy Ghost and drink from one of those old wells. I want the Holy Ghost to get on my great grandchildren. They aren't even born yet. Because this watered down, this, this muddy water stuff, it ain't going to keep your kids in this hour. There's too much mess out there. There's too much peer pressure out there. There's too much this and that. But you let them taste from that well. Well, I doubt it. I know what happened to me. Oh, Billy Franklin, my daddy, he dug a well. The devil tried to throw dirt in it when I was 16 for my life. Really, the devil came after every one of his children. Mom's sitting down there. She's still digging. She ain't going nowhere. Turned 80, 83, turned 83 Thursday, and she's still a digger. She's just a digging. She won't quit digging. My goal in life is to outdig you because God never intended for this thing to start like this and end like this. But if he started with this, then the next generation needs to be this and the next generation needs to be this. But we need to let hell know you ain't getting my family well. You ain't going to have my joy. You ain't going to have my children. You ain't going to have my grandchildren. Drugs and alcohol, dirt, get out of my family. I've got living water. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against it. Woo! I feel like shouting. Some of you need to believe that there's a family way. Well.
forces of hell that are coming against your family. Dig it. Dig it. Dig it. Hell's told some of you, your children don't even come to church anymore. They don't even talk about God anymore. They ain't going to never come back to church. But you turn in that spoon into a shovel. And it looks like it's just a little thing instead of pudding, banana pudding. You're getting the dirt out. Instead of chocolate cake. Instead of steak. Because I'd try to eat it with a spoon. That's how bad I want it. Despise not the day of small things. Because God told me to tell you that even if you haven't seen them and they won't come to church and you, they don't talk about God anymore, there's a river, there's a well in that family. And all it needs is an Isaac generation to start redigging. The well of sacrifice. Sacrifice has been sacrificed in this generation. We don't want it to cost us anything. Easy, easy believism. We've abandoned sacrifice. God didn't stutter when he said, Abraham, take your boy to the, to the mountain and sacrifice him. It's a burnt offering to me. God didn't say, I suggest you do it. God didn't beat around the bush. God required it. You want to be blessed? It requires sacrifice. You want an anointing a thousand times stronger than you are today? It requires sacrifice. I've been preaching a long time and I know the Bible pretty good. And I'm going to tell you, if I have to sacrifice, I can't lean on nothing in my past. No anointing from the past. All I can do is every year take the spoon and turn it into a shovel and say, get the dirt out, get the dirt out, get the earth out, get the carnality out, get the flesh out and fill me again. Because I'm not just digging for me. And I'm digging for Courtney and Carissa, Caroline, Connor, Drake, Amelia, Colette, Luca, Leo, my grandchildren, Ben and Tyler, my son-in-law. They got to feel this. They got to experience this. Their children has got to experience this or it won't be real. This dirty water, this, this dirty worship, this mixture of the world and, and the spirit, it doesn't work. It's not, it's not powerful. And it requires sacrifice. God will Never take what you don't want. But he'll ask you for what you love. I'm preaching better than you're letting on, but I'm just going to tell you. Listen to this. God is not your garbage collector. God is not your goodwill store. Where you give him the time and the money and anything else that you have left over that you really don't want. This is not, this church is not a massage parlor to make you feel good. It's not a love boat. This is a battleship. And every now and then it requires sacrifice. It requires you taking the, the, the shovel and saying, I'm getting the dirt of my own carnality out. And I'm going to sacrifice to God. And lastly, I'm going to redig the well of faith while I'm fasting this last week. Jesus said, when I come back, listen to the question he had. Will I still find earth, faith in the earth? 
In other words, will anybody be preaching healing anymore? Anointing with oil? Laying on of hands? Will anybody be preaching the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Speaking with other tongues? Prophesying? Will anybody be preaching miracles, signs, and wonders? Or will the church just be a bunch of professionals? Paul said, I do not come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom. But I come in demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's what we need desperately in this church. How do you, how do you unclog the well of faith? You get the dirt of unbelief and doubt out. I believe my children will be saved. I believe my body will be healed. I believe my finances will prosper and be blessed. God, you can do it. Say it, everybody. God, you can do it. Say it again. I believe. I want the dirt of unbelief out. I want the dirt of doubt out. Say, God, you can do it again. Some of you buried your faith. Lazarus died and his sisters and family put him in the tomb and buried their faith and said, it's too late. And some of you have children and grandchildren and it looks like they're dead spiritually. They don't talk about God anymore. They don't come to church anymore. But God knows how to move stones. Redig the well of faith. And you'll start saying, as for me and my house, I don't walk by what I see. I walk by what I hear. And I believe this over anything I see going on with any of my children. I've had, I'm living in victory in this area right now. Every one of my kids are loving God, serving God. I'm so thrilled and I'm so happy. But we fought hell. We fought demons. We fought devils. And I said it when I was going through it. As for me and my house, we will serve. I reminded the devil. I would redig that well and say, you know what? You just have your heyday. But one day when this is over, those kids are going to torment you. One of these days, devil, I'm going to make you pay. One of these days, you're going to break out in a revival. Revival at Forward Conference and you're going to pour out your spirit on 14,000 teenagers at one time just because you mess with my children. Upon your sons and your daughters, I will pour out my spirit. It's coming. Muddy water has become the norm. Powerless Pentecost has become the norm. We have more deserts than we have downpours. We need to redig the well. We have more perversion in the church than we do power. We need to redig the well. When we have more playboys in the pulpit than prophets, we need to redig the well. When we have more compromise than convictions. When's the last time you added to your conviction list? I know you, you've saved by grace and grace sets you free and you mark that off your conviction list and I, used, I can do that and I can do that. Well, when's the last time you added something to your conviction list? We need a fresh baptism of power. You'll never have a public, powerful manifestation of God's power and glory. You'll never have a public, powerful manifestation until you have a private conversation with God in prayer. Chẳng thể đối thay một cuộc sống không em anh phải làm sao đây? Từ thương lấy mình thôi đớn đau nhiều rồi, tự mình vô về thôi khi không ai cạnh bên. Tập yêu bản thân thôi để không phải buồn.
ends with this, Ezekiel 47. And it said, he showed me a river. Started in the temple, and I love the fact it says it started at the altar. That's what we're doing. And the river started flowing, and it went to the ankles. But somebody kept digging, and it went to the knees. And another generation came from generation to generation and got real hungry in the end time. And it went to the waste. And then he said something powerful. He said, we got to digging until somebody hit a gusher. And the river got so strong. The current got so strong. There was no way I could go back. There was no way I could be who I used to be. The river carried me. The river took me. And I'm telling you. That there's a family whale that's waiting to be dug this week. I want you to get that spoon in your hand again because I want it to be a mental picture and reminder to you this week. I want you to go put it on the table or somewhere in your house. I want you to put it on that table and I want you to remind yourself that there's a family well. How many of you know deep in your heart somewhere, somehow, and you may say, well, I don't even have any relatives that are saved. You know what I loved about that testimony we just watched? I've met those people and talked with those people. It's one of the most, they didn't go into the detail they did with me. They had a business, a fortune telling business. She said, I would know things. Well, you know what that was? That was, the, that was those more fierce demons empowering her. And she said, I had clients and, and, and in that demonic world, but their daughter came to free chapel got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and went in the same house where they would do their, 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 their uh, crystal balls and tarot cards and, and talking to spirit guides, and she was in the back room fasting and praying and digging. And the river got loose and got mama and got daddy, and there's a whole clan of that family that comes now. A whole group of that family, the whole family. The curses are broken off of the whole family. This kind of dirt comes out, but by fasting and prayer. You may not have any granny or aunt or uncle that you can know of, but you can start a well in your family. And God can set your family free. Stand up on your feet and get your spoon in your hand. My God, I brought my neighbor, Pastor Franklin. I don't care. <laughs> Praise God. Hold that spoon up in the air right now. Say, Lord, I'm turning this spoon into a shovel this week. We don't need some old dirty water. We don't need some dumbed down gospel. We need the upper room, Acts chapter 2, Ezekiel 47 river to hit my family, to hit my children, to hit my grandchildren, to hit my house, and to hit my church. And I'm, go I'm going on these next seven days. You say, I haven't been fasting. You're going to the next seven days. I deputize you. You're going to fast the next seven days. You're going to go without some meat. You're going to go without some bread. You're going to go without some sugar. And you're going to seek God's face, and you're going to hit the river. And the well of worship is going to open, and the well of faith, and the well of sacrifice, and the well of prayer. And suddenly, you're going to begin to see a thousand times more of God's presence than you had before. How many of you say, Pastor Franklin, you're preaching to me. Just bow your head a minute. If you're in this room today and you'd say, Pastor Franklin, I'm backslid. There's so much dirt that I've allowed to clog up the well. I really need a change. I really need a cleansing. I really need deliverance. I really need freedom. I really need help. I really need God. Please, Pastor Franklin, I want to receive Jesus as my master, Lord, and Savior. I want to surrender it all to Him. I want Him to get the dirt out and fill me with living water. 
And you're preaching to me this morning. I know I'm not right with God. I'm talking. I really feel this. Keep hearing this word backsliders. Backsliders. Children raised in this church, but you're backslid. You're doing things. You're living a lifestyle of sin and playing the hypocrite. But God says, I want to get the dirt out. Pastor, pray for me. I want to get right with God today. If that's you, be bold and throw your hand up in the air right where you're standing. I want to see it. That's powerful. Get them up. There they go. 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 High. Raise them high and unashamed. All the way to the top. In the overflow. Wherever you are. At every campus. I told them before I came in here, for some reason, I've been singing this song to myself all week. It says, pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble I've been singing it in the shower. Say it again, do not pass me by, 
done the work you don't know it you're washed you're forgiven you're but right now just say these words Lord Jesus I surrender everything to you clean the dirt out fill me with living water I'm not changing the name of my well ever again my well is not alcohol my well is not drugs my well is not perversion my well has a name and that name is Jesus, and he sets me free, and he cleanses me, and I'm free indeed. Hallelujah. Now I've got a way of worship, so give him a little worship right now. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. For more information about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.